additional point, I mean, first I want to say that I agree with what everybody has said and uh, uh, with the last speaker as well about the ideas of, of consent. Um, and we can have a discussion about, you know, what I call the control by uterus laws, which are the, uh, the medical termination of pre pregnancy 71 and the, um, the PCPMDT, the sex selection law. And Indian women who actually should have been lucky because we got the rights to abortion way before Irish women did and way before American women did as well. And yet the stigma around, I mean, I don't know how many women in this room have ever been for an abortion. It is a harrowing experience because it is, it doesn't matter, you know, husband ka hai, husband ko saath nahi lai, kyun nahi lai, kyun gira rahe ho, bacha hai, after all, you know, the nurses are talking to each other in this fashion or you know, this, this conversation that happens in a hospital around abortion completely undoes any right that we have got under, under the medical termination of pregnancy. So yes, the law is simply incapable of even giving us the rights that it textually has given. And now I want to go to the IPC and the Atrocities Act to talk about sexual crimes and what is the difference in the construction of these two sets of... The, the Indian Penal Code, like we've already discussed, is really in many ways, and it's highlighted in this booklet, in many ways to uphold patriarchy and to uphold the caste structure. Fine. The Prevention of Atrocities Act, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. In other words, there is the Varna law, the dominant social code. That's a law that was given by Mr. Manu. Uh, a really horrific lawgiver, but yes, that does exist. And the Prevention of Atrocities Act was crafted in direct opposition and targeting that Parna system. That is the difference between, you see, IPC is very loyal to patriarchy. The Indian Penal Code is a handmaiden, supporter, and loyalist cheerleader for caste-based patriarchy. The Prevention of Atrocities Act, on the other hand, is a complete blow to Varna law. There is a very crucial difference in the ways in which both these, we can look at both these sets of laws. So the Prevention of Atrocities Act of, of 89, which actually follows from the Protection of Civil Rights, which is 1955, law students here will know that, but its crafting was a very important political moment for Dalit rights in India because the language and what it sought to do was there is so there is no virginity chastity outraging modesty there's none of this nonsense right it speaks a very direct language of exploitation of humiliation of servitude of intent to humiliate so it speaks directly to a caste system and it says our job is to turn varna law on its head that is the very critical part of it is also the only extant law in India, apart from the, the disabilities law, which is of a different nature. This is the only law that actually recognizes and is centered around a person's location in society by acknowledging identity. Otherwise, we say law is blind. It doesn't matter who you are in a courtroom. Everybody's equal, blah, 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 blah. But of course it matters. It matters if you're lower caste. It matters if you're tribal. It matters if you're a woman. And it matters who the judges are. Whereas the SCST Act is directly a law that says an act committed against a Dalit or tribal by a non-tribal. So it's only a law. And in the very construction of the law, it therefore very clearly and categorically identifies and locates. In that sense, it is really the only hate crime law we have in this country, which is a shame. 
we are the only major democracy and we're not much of a democracy anymore, but to the extent that we continue to be one, pretend to be one, we are the only ones that have nothing. We don't have a hate crime law. We don't, we choose and prefer not to recognize the fact of a person's identity in the crime that was committed. And that is the huge moment of the Atrocities Act. It recognizes that, that location. And it tells you exactly where you're placed in the power structure of society. Now, having said that, what is the challenge being mounted to this extraordinary law? The challenge being mounted to it is not the challenge that you see to, say, the way sexual assault laws play out in the courtroom. The challenge to the Atrocities Act is mounted in the very first stage of application of the act. In other words, a crime happens against a Dalit or a tribal, assault, grievous hurt, rape, thappar, gali, anything. The first problem is not whether the crime occurred. The first problem is, does this crime invoke the SCST Prevention of Atrocities Act? The police in a majority of cases will not allow the Prevention of Atrocities Act to be applied. Why? They will say, yes, this crime took place. The victim is a Dalit or a tribal. The accused is a non-Dalit, non-tribal, could be upper caste, but they did not attack this person because of their caste. So this because of on the grounds of, <laughs> did they do it out of caste hatred? What, that is the point at which the, so in other words, you've really got the Varna laws hitting back at stage one. They're not even allowing this case to go into court as an atrocity. They are saying at the police station, we will not apply the SCST Act. And that is, has what's been. So when we worked on amendments to the law, this is when I was in the National Advisory Council, and most of those went, here's what is a perfect example of some of us trying to tinker, tinker, tinker with the law, and yet not achieving the results. So we did try and tinker. And what does that mean? So it meant what Madhu has called, we said, all right, if that is why they're not going to, so I'll give you an example. So hypothetically, if an offense says a person uh, this is an offense. To forcibly put a garland of chappals on a pus on a Dalit and parade them around the village with intent to humiliate. Please observe. Forcibly put with intent to humiliate. Under the old laws, you can counter and say it wasn't forcible. And there was no intention to humiliate. It was a joke. So what we tried to do was take some of these and craft them into strict liability laws. In other words, anybody who is paraded semi-naked with a garland of chappals, the act itself speaks to force and it speaks to intent to humiliate. So remove both of those phrases from the law and say if a non-Dalit, non-tribal garlands any Dalit or tribal and parades them in the village. That's an offense. So we try and do away with, and there are many places where we attempted to do that, to remove any, so on the grounds of. Now, a lot of the old law said, if X happens to a Dalit on grounds that they are a Dalit, then this law. So what we tried to do was change that presumption and say, remove the phrase on the grounds of, if this person had knowledge that that person is Dalit, that's enough presumption. So when, when upper castes in a single village attack a Dalit hamlet, then the presumption has to be, they knew these guys are Dalit. So to prove that it was done on the grounds of, you see, the police would get back or the judiciary would get back and say, nee, nee, ye koi previous existing land ka tha. Ye on the grounds of caste hatred. Nahi tha. 
सो इसको कितना भी आप क्लीन अप करो यू स्टिल हैव वॉट वी सॉ इन मार्च ऑफ दिस ईयर वी हैड द सुप्रीम कोर्ट डायल्यूट द प्रिवेंशन ऑफ अट्रॉसिटीज एक्ट सेम ऑटोमैटिक अरेस्ट एंड एफ आई आर कैन अनलेस देर इज अ प्रिलिमिनरी इंक्वायरी नाउ वॉट इज द रीजन दैट द सुप्रीम कोर्ट वेरी ऑनरेबल जुडिशियल माइंड वाई डिड दे सीक टू डायल्यूट दिस लॉ वॉट इज द एविडेंस दैट दे साइटेड it's you know it's so circular the logic is what that the scst act has very low convictions many of the cases under scst act are dismissed at initial stage that is the reason the law, we think the law is being abused because these are all false cases therefore please dilute the scst act and so anybody who now seeks to that's the current law today it hasn't yet been challenged and we are hoping that an ordinance will come from this from this government to to remove this the strike down by the and strike this down by the supreme court that you you simply cannot apply the scst act unless there is first a preliminary inquiry so this is how the so despite all our attempts at creating strict liability offences removing the on the grounds of the system is finding its ways to hit back and not even allow application of the law so i i think the the point is um i guess i'm i'm going to i'm going to stop here so i think the struggles to work with the text of the law uh are valid and they have taken place but uh the struggles to fix everything outside the space of the law i think are have not really even even begun and so to this law is actually one of the most hopeful we have in its text and yet it's among the most difficult in india to apply for that precise reason thank you very much